I was fortunate enough to ride the R1 at Suzuka in 2019. The Duke of Richmond uh, had this idea of trying to ride one of my GP bikes at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, but in 2020 there was a scheduling issue. 2021 there was the COVID pandemic, so there was no event. So really the best year for it to work for me was this year in 2022 because my last world championship was 30 years ago in 1992. And there was a bike available, but it was in the Yamaha Museum in Japan. And it's been silent for 30 years, just sitting still. Uh, so when I contacted Lynn Jarvis and told them what, the, what they would like to do, and so Yamaha looked at the bike and, and was in much better shape than they thought. Nakajima-san, the uh, MotoGP boss, took the bike apart. Uh, they converted it so I could ride it and shift it. They took it to the Yamaha test track and tested the bike. And then they shipped it over here to England and uh, to the Paget's team. And they brought it here to Goodwood and I threw a leg over it. So that's, that's kind of how it all started. When I was injured uh, in 93, when I was in hospital, there was, uh, there was a couple weeks there where I had this thought or a idea that, man, I really want to get back on that GP bike again. I had no idea what that would look like or if that could even happen. But it was motivation that kept getting me up every day. And it was something that was really the only thing that was really encouraging me to keep going. But then over time and reality, you know, sunk in and, you know, my new life was obviously going to be much more uh, different than what it was in the past. So riding a motorcycle was never it just faded, that whole thing faded. And, uh, and then finally when I got that opportunity at Suzuka, and then when I had the chance to ride my Grand Prix bike here, it was just like, wow, this, uh, I never thought that it would happen, especially at an event like this. I thought the R1 was it was an easy bike to convert because they had so much electronics on it already. So it was pretty easy just to shift up, shift down. It was just up and down button. It had on the dash, I could see which gear I was in. The real thrill for me was being at Suzuka and actually riding through a couple of the corners where I'd had my, uh, one of my greatest uh, victories that personally that I ever had. I really got a big thrill out of that. But when the idea came for this bike, it was obviously going to be a much higher challenge because it's the bike was 30 years old there's no electronics it was a 500 cc two-stroke so there was a lot of uh, components that we weren't sure if we could really pull it off so as it turned out the way i shift the bike was you hit the kill button that shifts the bike up and then you pull the clutch in and that shifts each time you pull the clutch in that shifts the bike down R racing a grand prix bike especially in the two-stroke era the riders always rode with their fingers on the clutch in case the engine decided to stop. So that was real, when I rode it here, that was a real challenge is to keep my fingers off the clutch. But um, yeah, it was a real thrill. I was probably a little bit more nervous about this ride than I was at any other time in my career, even more so than Suzuka. The biggest challenge for me was getting the bike to initially leave because I don't have a real good sense of balance so the bike needs to be moving and I remember the first time I took off I almost uh, dropped it because I wasn't going fast enough and then so you figured out you had to get on the throttle pretty good but once I was rolling and the bike was so smooth and and the way that you know the seating position and the way my really the only thing I can feel is the handlebars so there was a adjusting to all that, but the way the engine sounded and the way it ran, it ran real smooth. Uh, the bike, it wants to be on a racetrack, and so having it here at the Festival of Speed with the, the way the circuits laid out was perfect for the bike and for me, and yeah, it was, um, each time I ride it, I wished I could ride it longer. 
So uh, the, the, we just ride a little short uh, lap up the hill, but it's always too short. But, uh, you know, having Kenny and, and of course, Kevin Schwantz and Mick Dewan and having us all ride together is, that was something I knew would never happen again. So I thought, if I ever thought about it, I thought, eh, maybe a chance I could ride, but I never thought I'd be on the track with those guys. So they let me take off first and I'm riding and I get going and you know there's all the people here and you're so close to the people you could actually hear them and then they have all the the big screen TVs so as I'm riding I can see Kenny and Mick and Kevin and they're just like right there and it just it reminds me when I look at that I go wow that is like that's going on right here so I really appreciate you know, those guys wanting to come here and, and do this with me because uh, that's uh, 30 years down the road and having that happen is, uh, was a fantasy. You know, I'm glad the fans uh, haven't forgot that was a long time ago. You know, Yamaha's always been, uh, you know, it was my manufacturer that I won all my world championships with. I have a long relationship with them, you know, much longer than after my career was over. And now, you know, with the Moto America Racing Series, they still support us there. Yamaha is a real racing heritage company and uh, it was a big risk for them to step up and you know build a bike, put me on it on a bike that was 30 years old and take that risk as well. But I think when we both sat down and, and you know went through the, the highs and the lows we knew that you know this is going to be okay because I'm just going up the, the Goodwood Hill and I'm really glad that they uh, that they provided this for me.